Hello, Alex here, and today we're talking about my first role of Lomography's Lady Grey 400 black and white film, which I shot back in 2020 during the first lockdown in the Nikon F3 in the 35mm format. Let's get into it. Lady Grey 400 is a black and white negative film cut down from master rolls of Foma's Fomapan 400 by Lomography. It is available in the 35mm and 120 formats, but unlike Foma 400, it's not available in sheet film formats. Foma themselves say that Fomapan 400 is an action film, uh, ideally used under unfavorable lighting conditions or when you need a fast shutter speed. They say it promises good resolving power and flexible exposure. What they mean by this is that, according to the data sheet, you can rate the film anywhere from EI 200 to 1600, still develop it for EI 400 and get usable perfect results without having to mess around with your development. And this theoretically means you can shoot the film at multiple different EIs within the same role as well, which is nice. In both 120 and sheet film formats, the film does have a clear polyester base and a greenish anti-halation layer which washes off during development. In the 35mm format, what we're talking about here, you have a grey cellulose triacetate base, which means it's not so ideal for reversal processing compared to the larger formats, and you don't have any anti-halation layer whatsoever, so halations could be a thing. The film can be developed in pretty much anything. Both Lomography and Foma say you can develop it in whatever. And if you check sites like the Massive Dev Chart, you can you can find conditions to develop pretty much any uh, EI rating for Foma 400 or Lomo Lady Grey in any format in pretty much any developer. Chances are somebody out there has done it. Obviously, as a negative film, development in your standard black and white process will yield negatives, which have to be inverted either during the scanning or printing process to yield your final positive images. The film, obviously from the name, has a nominal ISO rating of 400. Each cartridge contains 36 exposures and they are not DX coded, so communication of this and the ISO to your camera electronically is not possible. Aside from what Lomography and Foma have said about the film, the film itself is actually known for having good resolving power, moderate but tolerable grain, and significantly good response to being pushed or underexposed. Which kind of lines up with what Foma themselves said in their pretty in-depth datasheet. So, I shot this roll of film during the first lockdown back in 2020, as I mentioned in my Nikon F3 with the 50mm AIS f1.2 lens. That was the only lens I had, so that's what I used. These photos are not very good, as I'm sure you've realised by now. This was, I think, my third or fourth roll of film ever, and I wasn't very inspired during the time. Um, photography was just something to keep me occupied, but in the spirit of the video series, we're going to talk about this roll because it was my first roll. I've shot this film since, both under Fomapan and La uh, Lomography Lady Grey branding, and I do like it, but those pictures are nicer, but that's not what we're going to show here because I'm going to hold myself to the, the name of this series. I rated the film at EI400 and developed it in Ilford DDX. Uh, what dilution? Don't know. For how long? I also don't know. At what temperature? probably 18 to 20 C, but I don't know. I didn't keep good notes when I started developing film and uh, that was a lesson I learned very quickly. So it was probably DDX one plus four because I don't think this was around the time where I had discovered uh, weaker dilutions to save money and change the tonality of things. So I probably just did one plus four and whatever the recommended time is, I probably did that, but I don't know for sure. Although I did originally scan these images on my Epson V600 that I used to own, I did rescan them using the 1DX for the purposes of this video, and then invert it and process the scans using Adobe Lightroom. I also don't have 36 frames to show you here because I did a bit of aperture bracketing with the 50mm f1.2. 
it's not very good at 1.2, don't shoot it at 1.2. And I'm not going to go through those images and comparisons because they weren't performed technically well enough to be a useful comparison. And I also took some pictures of myself and my father when we were locked down up here and they're not really something I want to put in the video, so whatever. But nevertheless, despite having less than a full roll of films worth of pictures and the pictures not being that good for the most part, we can still learn a lot about the film itself based on its response to different lighting conditions, how I exposed it, that kind of thing. So it's still a useful exercise in my opinion and it's still again in the spirit of the name of the series. Compared to a lot of other black and white films, even relatively flat or tonally flat films like HP5, it has quite a high natural black point, which means that you retain a lot of shadow detail even if you underexpose a bit. Which probably leads into point two. This film responds really well to underexposure and pushing. FOMA themselves say that in the data sheet and it's the same stuff coming from Lomography, so that still applies. Uh, Tom Staunton is my go-to expert for pushing and abusing FOMA of every size, of every speed. And uh, he's pushed it to ridiculously high ISOs or EI ratings without much trouble at all and he's gotten perfectly usable results. I would recommend checking out his Instagram if you want to either see his pictures or just talk to him and ask him about any tips he might have. But yeah, it does work very well and I think that naturally raised black point kind of contributes to that because when you push or underexpose you do lose a bit of shadow detail but if you're starting with a lot to begin with you can lose a bit and still have a good amount there. Thirdly, it's FOMA and always has been. If you're okay buying it without the Lomography brand, individually rolled or even bulk rolls of FOMA 400 are incredibly cheap and probably the cheapest black and white film, at least in 400 speed, you can possibly get your hands on. And for that, the film deserves praise and everything is kind of, or should be, kind of set with that price threshold in mind. It's not 12 to 20 euro across. It's a lot cheaper than that. It's like one sixth the cost. So the fact that it performs as well as it does is worthy of praise. This is a small thing, but I found that unlike a lot of films, this stuff actually flattens really easily after drying when you develop it. And that's just a small thing that's like a quality of life thing. If you can flatten it easily, you can scan it easily. You don't have to weigh it down under a mountain of books for a month. You can just scan it relatively soon. Again, a small thing, but nice. The last thing that I want to say here is a small one, but I think that even though Lomography repackaged the film and there isn't a markup associated with that, which is fine, and they do get a lot of flack for that, I think it's worth it in a sense that there are a lot of places that stock Lomography films that will not stock FOMA or Burger or those kind of lesser brands that the kind of the newbie to film would not know about. Yes, it's more expensive than buying FOMA 400 from FOMA, but if you can actually go to your local camera store and buy the stuff, regardless of what label is on the box, that gets more people into film and that is, in my opinion, a good thing because if they stick with film, they're going to eventually find out that it's FOMA Pan 400, buy it from FOMA, even if they don't buy it from Lomography, they're buying film now, and that's good for all of us. Given that it is a budget film stock, the resolution and grain don't really hold up in comparison to more expensive options like Ilford's HP5, Burger Pancro 400, Kodak's T-Max 400, those kind of films. That is okay given the cost, but it is objectively not as good, and that is worth mentioning just for the sake of completeness. I think if you know about FOMA, you know what the deal is, but if you don't, then this will still be useful information for you. Realistically, this probably isn't an issue in 120 format because you have such a large negative to actually begin with, but in 35 it could be a problem depending on what you want to do. The second thing I want to mention here is that that raised black point can work against you in very low contrast, very soft lighting, because you end up with such a compressed tonal range that when you try and expand that out in post-processing after you've scanned your film, you just end up adding a lot of digital noise. So I didn't push this too hard, just 
or very much at all, just to show what it looks like naturally. But if you wanted to get this looking like T-Max or, you know, um, Delta 400, you're going to get a, a much worse image than you probably think you will by the time you get the contrast and overall tonal range looking the same, if that makes sense. Lastly, the lack of an anti-halation layer in the 35mm format, remember it does have anti-halation layers in larger formats, it just, it leads to halations, which is fine, I like them, but in this case, it adds this kind of bloom that just softens the image a little bit too much. You don't have much resolution to begin with, and the halations, the bloom kind of takes away from that a little bit more. That might be what you're going for. It definitely fits character lenses and the dreamy look, but it's just probably not for a lot of people. Personally, I like it, maybe you won't. So, my top three favorite pictures from this role. My third favorite picture from the role is this one of Mr. Fluffy, our local fox who lives on my road. He is a good boy when he's not urinating on your Mamiya RB67 and your car and everything else but when he's not doing that he's very nice he's very cuddly and he'll just sit there and have a nice time i like this picture more than some of the other pictures i've taken of him just because it's simple you get the sense of motion even though he's obviously moving quite slowly you get the the directionality the leading line of the curb uh just going in line with where he's going and it's a simple composition again this was one of my first roles of film. I wasn't thinking too hard about composition when I'm still getting used to the concept of shooting film, let alone developing it. But I still think this works quite nicely. So I originally cropped this photo 16 by nine, but since getting the Hasselblad X-Pan, I've gone back through a lot of my back catalog and found a lot of pictures like this one that work well in that 65 by 24 aspect ratio. This is just a little key holder thing that I was gifted a couple of years ago. It's sitting on top of my bed frame, my headboard. It's a pretty simple composition. There's a lot of negative space. The tail is pointing into the negative space. Um, I think this was at f2. I'm pretty sure this was an f1.2 and it was at or near minimum focus distance and then cropped. It's the full width of the frame, just cropped vertically. I mean, there's a good bit of detail there. You can see a bit of bloom around the tail, never mind the bouquet in the background. I think it's nice. This would be, if it were higher quality, a potentially nice wallpaper for my computer. It's that kind of picture. Oh, the day that I discovered how to do double exposures on the Nikon F3, I did a few. I did a couple on this roll and then another few on another roll, which I never really liked the results with. This one though, I really do like. It's just my hand held up against the sky and then a bunch of flowers in the park when I was going out for a walk. This is a, a true double exposure. It's on the negative. Um, I'm very happy with how I was able to line things up. It is cropped a little bit just to get away from the three to two aspect ratio, tighten it in a little bit, but this works very nicely. I'm very, very happy with this. And to be honest, I should do a few more double exposures. I haven't done much with that kind of thing in a while. I'm not sure how I feel about the bouquet in the background of the actual background flowers being blurred out. I think it clashes with the texture in my hand a little bit too much, but then I didn't want it to be too sharp either and too in focus so that I would potentially have um, overlapping textures from the hand and the flowers. But um, I still think it works relatively okay here and I really, really like this picture. So who is the film for and do I recommend it? I would say it's actually not for people who are starting out with black and white film photography despite the low cost because in most labs you end up paying quite a lot of money for black and white film development. I'll talk about that in another video maybe at some stage but if you really want to just get started with black and white I would recommend Ilford's XP2 Super Film because it can be developed in the standard C41 chemical process which means you can get it developed basically anywhere for a lot lower cost than you would pay for black and white film development. If you develop your own film, fine, BOMA 400 is great, you can develop it in anything, you can develop it in your own urine if you feel like it, but it's definitely not for the absolute beginner, I would say, because of the cost of development. Do I recommend it? Yes. I mean, for the cost, you can do whatever you want with it. You're trying out push and pull processing, you want to try out a camera just for like light leaks or mechanical testing, 
this is kind of the perfect film stock to try out that kind of thing especially if you bulk roll it I mean, you could roll up a six exposure roll do that kind of thing there's a lot of good to say about Fomapan 400 and Lomography Lady Grey, whichever brand you buy it in. Yeah, the film is grainy. It's not that high resolution, but it's nice. And I think, again, you're getting a lot more than what you're paying for. That's it for this video. Stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Shaka1277, where I post new pictures every single day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon, where the tiers start at just one euro per month.